Hello guys and welcome back to Fatboss TV. Today we're back from more raid testing from the Legion Alpha. And in this video we're going to be showing you Spellblade Allurial from the Nighthold. Yes, Spellblade Allurial. So she's a pretty simple encounter in the sense that the mechanics aren't too complicated. However, the abilities in play do feel like they're like super fast paced. They're coming in at you all the time. So you're on your toes for the majority of the fight. This is also one of the first encounters so far during testing that actually feels complete. If they put this on live servers in the state that it was on alpha, it would be fine. There's like pretty much nothing wrong with the encounter and it was super fun to play against. Now, according to the incomplete dungeon journal, it is the fourth boss in the dungeon and it takes place in this large courtyard that looks absolutely amazing somewhere within the Nighthold. Now, this encounter is a free phase fight where the boss constantly just keeps rotating through a frost, a fire, and an arcane phase, one after another. In each phase, the boss has one main ability, and then she'll constantly keep interacting with that ability in one way or another by either replicating it, detonating it, and then animating it, and you'll sort of understand how that works in just a moment. However, in every single phase, she does have something for the tanks to deal with, which is Annihilate. This is simply just a frontal cone cleave that deals a ton of damage over the course of a couple of seconds, and the damage that is dealt is split between two targets, so you need your tanks to be stood on top of each other the entire time. However, whichever tank has threat at the moment the ability comes in will also receive a debuff that increases the damage they take from physical attacks for a minute and a half. It seems like the best way to deal with this ability is simply just to have some form of damage reduction up when it comes in and to taunt on two. Now, right at the start of the encounter, the boss starts in her frost phase. Now, her unique ability in this phase is something called Mark of Frost. This is just a debuff that is applied to two players for 40 seconds and just causes them to take ticking damage to themselves and any allies within eight yards. So you need to make sure that you sort of get away from people when you're not AOE on top of them. Now, each time you are hit by this ticking damage, another debuff is applied to you called Frostbitten, which increases the damage you take from the Mark of Frost by 100%. And this just stacks up and up and up. So over the course of the debuff, you take even more ticking damage from the ability up to the point where it pretty much becomes completely unhealable. However, if the two players that have the Mark of Frost come into contact with one another, they'll actually cause an explosion. This explosion deals a small amount of raid-wide damage, but more importantly, it completely clears the Frostbitten stack. So the idea is, is that you let the stacks go up so high, then you meet, you deal damage to the entire raid, and then the stacks drop. So throughout the 40 seconds that the first players had the Mark of the Frost debuffs, we just made sure that they dropped their Frostbitten stacks around 3 to 4. This made it so their damage didn't go up too high on themselves, and the raid-wide damage from the explosion didn't come in too frequently. Now, as Loz said at the beginning, the boss will interact with her unique ability in each phase by replicating it, detonating it, and animating it. So when she replicates the Mark of Frost, this will apply the debuff to several more players. Now this debuff comes in a little bit later than the initial Mark of Frost and does have a reduced duration so it will end at the same time as the initial Mark of Frost. For our particular raid size, an additional five players were given the Mark of Frost. However, with a smaller one, you probably only have like two or three extra players. Now this left us in a situation where we had a large amount of players wanting to drop their stacks at the same time. Now if they did all cause explosions at the same time in order to remove their stacks, the amount of bursts that would go out on the raid as well as all of like the Mark of Frost targets dealing ticking damage, this would just be way too high and people would easily fall over. So what we did, we had our players drop their stacks in a staggered fashion. We just called out on TeamSpeak to have one set of players drop their Frostbitten stacks at around 4, another to drop theirs around 5, and then the last set to drop it around 6 or 7. This way, the stacks wouldn't get too high, and the raid wouldn't get one shot by explosions as they would come out in a staggered way. Now shortly after the replicate, the boss will then detonate the Marks of Frost. This will cause all players with the debuff to explode, dealing damage to nearby players, and more importantly, spawning a patch of frost underneath them. Now this frost patch would do ticking damage and slow you, so you needed to move out of it pretty quickly. And to be honest, as long as the frost players were spread out from one another and moved quickly out of the patches of frost, this wasn't particularly hard to deal with. As long as they had some personal cooldowns and maybe a raid-wide damage reduction, the damage from this wasn't too bad. However, shortly after this, the boss will then animate these patches. This will cause all of the patches on the ground to spawn frost adds. These adds need to be picked up by the tank, and then the DPS need to kill these off as soon as possible. Now, these adds have only one ability. They will simply just teleport to a random player, and this does include melee DPS, and spawn a massive AoE circle. The ad will then just begin to start channeling, dealing damage to anyone within the circle, as well as slowly pushing them out towards the edges. 
Now, if a player leaves or enters the AoE circle once it has become active, they'll become encased in ice, which just stuns them permanently and deals ticking damage to them until the ice cube is finally killed off by DPS. Getting encased in this ice is absolutely awful, so you never really want to leave or enter the circle while it's going on. Although you are actually able to move out of the AoE circle before it does become active, even if you are in the middle of it, 9 out of 10 times you wouldn't be able to do it due to like server lag or slow reaction time. Pretty much the only classes that could get out are people with like blinks or some form of movement speed increase. It was very, very difficult. So ultimately, instead, we had our players simply just stand in it. This does mean they are taking ticking damage, but providing the healers are sat on top of them, it's not a massive deal. We could easily carry it. However, whenever the ad did teleport into melee and it's on the tanks and all the melee and everything else, it's a bit of a pain. We actually decided to use healing cooldowns instead. Now, once you have finished off all of these awful ads, the boss should have transitioned into her fire phase. Now, her unique ability in Fire Phase is something called Searing Brand. This will mark a single player and create a line between them and the boss. A couple seconds later, the boss will charge at them, dealing damage and knocking back anyone in her way. She will then apply a dot to the initial target of the brand. Now, as with any of her unique abilities, she needs to replicate this. And the way she does this is just by applying this Searing Brand ability to several players all at the same time and doing the exact same thing, rushing towards them and knocking back and dealing damage to anyone in her way. What you have to do is just make sure there is nobody between the branded players and the boss and you should be absolutely fine. The dot that it leaves afterwards doesn't deal a lot of damage however it is very important for when she detonates them this will cause a small amount of damage to the raid but more importantly it will spawn a patch of fire underneath each of the branded players placing these patches is key to help you deal with the ads that spawn out of them when she animates she'll make it so from each patch of fire a fire elemental will spawn now these fire elementals will stand still and just spam cast pyroblow at a random player dealing a fairly high amount of damage but nothing that is completely unmanageable however if these ads are within eight yards of one another they will gain a buff that increases their damage dealt and their casting speed by a hundred percent and this stacks up. So if you have a group of these all on top of each other, they'll just be sending out instant cast, instant death balls all over your raid and everyone will just die. Now, as the ads don't move, you can place your fire patches from the detonate close enough together that you can cleave and deal damage to them with things like barrage or headshot, but far enough apart so that the ads don't gain the damage buff. Now, if an ad does happen to be too close to another one, you can actually interrupt it. When you do interrupt an ad, it will just run to the target with the highest threat and start melee hitting them. These melee hits really, really hurt, so you really shouldn't interrupt them unless you need to reposition them. You can also use things like death grips um, to reposition them and knockbacks, all that kind of stuff, and you can also stun the ads. So in theory, you could like mass grip all of the ads into one place and then just stun rotation them and kill them off with AoE DPS, However, that is likely to kill you very quickly if you mess up even a little bit. And these ads do have a lot of health, so unless you've got a lot of burst DPS, it's probably not even worth trying. We decided to have all of our DPS nuke down the same ad all at the same time. So we just popped Lust and all the CDs we had at this point, just so that we could clear them out before the boss entered her Arcane phase. Now in the Arcane phase, her unique ability is Arcane Orb. This will just spawn an orb that will just float around the room and just deal ticking damage to anyone that stood within 8 yards of it. Now when she replicates the arcane orb, she'll just summon even more of them and they'll just start flying around the room, just like the other ones did. We just made sure we don't stand near them, just in case they change direction, we had no issues with it. However, when she detonates the orb, she'll cause each arcane orb to fly up one by one and then just fall on the location of a random player. And when it lands, it deals large AoE damage to the raid. This AoE damage that does come in is actually reduced the further you are away from the explosion, so that's maybe quite important to note. However, with the strat that we used, it didn't really seem to be an issue. Every time this detonate came in, we decided just to have everyone in the raid stack up, and as soon as the first landing location was present, as soon as like you saw the animation, we just had the entire raid sort of like shuffle over in one group. Potentially, you could use some sort of movement speed increase, but probably be a little bit overkill. Maybe on Mythic, that would be like something you could use. But ultimately, for us, it was fine. We just shuffled along until every single orb had landed. Now it's really really beneficial to have all these orbs right on top of each other when they do land because when the boss decides to animate, a load of ads spawn out of them. Now these ads don't do anything whatsoever apart from one really really massive long channel 
it fucking hurts when this cast goes off. So having all these ads close together, if you can kill them within the minute's time, that means you're not going to wipe. If you've got a lot up like we did when we first saw this ability, we wipe very quickly when the ability went off. So you have to kill all of these elementals before their cast goes off. You can't stun them, you can't interrupt them, you can't death grip, you can't, there's no CC works on these. So you just need to make sure you kill them as soon as possible and having them all stacked up makes it really, really easy to do so. And after you've killed them off, the boss would just change back into frost mode and the fight would just keep repeating until she's dead. Yeah, and it's a good fight. It's it a really, really good fight. It's, I mean, at the start, we did say it's quite simple. Maybe the um, Mark of Frost debuff in the frost phase isn't necessarily that simple. It's maybe slightly complex and does require quite a lot of coordination. Player skill, you could argue, right yeah. at the start, you know, have everyone having to drop their stacks at certain times. But the rest of the encounter, it's very self-explanatory, especially when you understand the whole replicate um, animate and detonate how you if you understand that sequence and understand the core mechanic to start with It's really really simple and it's a great encounter and it is challenging There's a lot of things that you need to do correctly if you do it wrong you, you get punished Yeah, you get very very punished especially on the alpha right now If you didn't like it say you fucked up the ads placement or whatever and You didn't manage to kill them off in time or a couple of people died or got into ice blocks You will fall behind super super fast Big she, time. she transitions very quickly like we'll just be finishing off the fire ads with like bloodlust and a lot of our cooldowns and she's already spawning arcane orbs and you're finishing off the arcane ads and you're already going back into frost phase it's like come on pick up the pace hurry up hurry up hurry up but it's like oh i'm trying it's, <laughs> it's awesome though it's really really fun but one thing that um i did hear a little bit of a complaint about is the tank debuff the annihilation it doesn't change throughout the entire fight. It's such a shame because it's just like a static. It's okay, shit. Basically, the fight sucks for tanks. Yeah, it's just, it's just well, boring. Well, you get to pick up ads in the frost phase and you need to kind of like manipulate it a little bit so you can always pick up the ads in that phase, but that's it. Like, you don't tank anything else apart from those frost ads. And you'd like, it'd be nice if the annihilation maybe changed so it was like a frosty annihilation or a fire annihilation, an arcane one. Like, everyone else gets to deal with different things, but tanks are just stuck with the standard taunt on two and use cooldowns, which is a bit of a shame. I'd say the room it obviously looks amazing, but I think they failed maybe a little bit to sort of utilize it It's a massive courtyard and you'd expect the boss in some way to I don't know use it I mean you can go anywhere in this room, but you don't need to you can just stay in the same location the entire time The only thing that you really need to move from is of course when you're doing the arcane orbs and the fire patches Although they despawn quickly afterwards you do have the frost patches that stayed up the entire encounter Although when we did get to the second frost phase we was expecting even more ads. It was like some form of pseudo enrage. That didn't happen, so we assume that's a bug. Um, but yeah, you can just stay in place the entire time. It'd be really cool if there was like something going around the courtyard. I don't know, like a, a wall that insta kills you. Maybe you have like a frost one, like Hagara. Oh God. <laughs> you have like a, a lava waves coming towards you, like Sarfarian. Yeah, there is. you are fighting in a very, very big room. And as you said, although it looks beautiful, you don't use a lot of it. So maybe on Mythic, there'll be like some goo on the floor that stays there forever and it just fucks you up if you take too long. But um, yeah, overall, an amazing fight. Very fast paced, very, very fun. And I can't wait to see it on Mythic. But thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this little preview, then please do drop us down a like. It helps us out a lot. And we shall see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.